So we are going to officially start the meeting. Thank you. Uh, thank all of you for joining this meeting. And especially thank you, Karima, and thank you, Giosna, for joining this meeting. Um, this is a, a non-formal discussion. This is a friendly discussion that we want to have. And we have a few action items that we want to talk about. Um, Specifically, we want to talk about the Academics Career Autopilot program. Now, uh, let's talk about the audience group. This event was shared in different countries. I can imagine that some of the people joining us may not speak English very fluently. So we will try to speak in a simple English, international English. So that's something that we try to do. So we don't try to use any special kind of accent or slang or something. I hope that you still can hear us and hopefully with this speed that I'm talking, everybody can understand me. Uh, at the same time, I can also ask uh, Giotsna and Karimo, both of you, you are almost native in English. Uh, I also wanted to ask you, maybe you can also speak a little bit slower than usual so that we don't have any problem. Uh, not only because of the uh, because of the international situation that we have, sometimes because of the, the internet connections. You know that when the internet connection is not so good, sometimes we need to talk and speak a little bit slower and repeat the important word and so on. So this is actually the style that we are going to use in this meeting. And specifically, we are going to talk about the Academics Career Autopilot program. So hopefully, you can see um, the poster that we created for this. If uh, we want to start, I would like to start with a little bit of introduction. Karima, uh, yes. would you like to start introducing yourself? I think this is something. And then with my questions, I will just dig into more. So we have Karima and Giotsna. I will start with Karima. Could you please just go ahead and a little bit give a little bit of hello. How are you? And you want to uh, introduce yourself. Oh, hi to everyone. And thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, so I'm Karima and I am from Morocco. I've had my bachelor's degree in uh, biomedical sciences, and then I went on to do some practical experience, and then I joined academics. And so, and then it's, the journey started for me. So uh, I'm, I'm currently going through a career change. So that's the reason why I jumped into this uh, career acceleration program. And so far it's been a pleasant experience. I'm specializ uh, specializing in agile management and uh, agile digital marketing so that would be my specialty and so far i've worked on uh, different projects and i was able to catch up and i was able to learn a lot of things uh the technical and non-technical skills and so yeah so that would be that would be me briefly very good great great thank you so you said that you you were studying the biomedical that was actually your major uh, during the bachelor degree. And yes. the major reason that you joined academics was different than what happens at the end. So basically right now, the main expertise that you have is the agile management and agile marketing. And this is actually the expertise you have. It's quite interesting that uh, you started four years of a study at bachelor level, and right now in a short amount of time, you are moving and you are expert in a completely different field. That is one of the topics we are going to get back to this. I'm going to ask you the next question. But before doing that, I would like also to welcome Giotsna. Giotsna, would you like to have a little bit of intro? Hello, how are you from your side? So that we can also talk a little bit about this later. Yeah, sure. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this program. So let me get, give me a small introduction about me. Myself, Jotsma Surisati. I'm from South India. And I did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering. So after my mechanical engineering, I thought to do, uh, especially in the field of research and development. So that is one of the reasons I chose Europe because Europe is a very large economy, especially in funding of uh, many projects in every year, they fund a lot of money, especially in the field of mechanical, computers, and electrical and electronics, whatever it is. So after that, I came to Germany. So I did in, I did my master's in plastic technology and composites in Germany for three to four years. And of course, I did some internships, several internships, and also did some projects in the companies. 
so after that yeah i try to search my i mean i mean the job seeker visa which is in germany normally it's like 18 months visa so in this meantime i have to find a job before joining in this academics program i tried to uh, involve and try to apply as much as applications and unfortunately of course i got calls one two calls but i didn't got selected and the time is taking too much and later on luckily i got professor chawad has contacted me through the linkedin actually so i have seen the profile and for one two months i have observing this program and what is the course structure and i especially know the differences between the public universities and the career autopilot program i know the slight differences and i joined the program and successfully within 3 to 4 months i got i landed in the job so from this month i started my job as a researcher in one of the institute yeah that's the thing in austria so that in uh, austria yeah let me talk about this because many people they uh, they still think that europe is a combination of several countries sometimes this is i want to work in austria i want to work in germany sweden and so on but europe is actually is a whole so my first question from um, uh, from jyotsna is that once you joined here once you moved here to germany did you think of let's say finding a job somewhere else outside of outside of germany what was your focus and what do you see it right now Uh, many people outside of europe they don't know that this kind of the, the mechanism of border and so on in europe is not existing just like the other countries and so on. so how do you see that at the moment and uh, did uh, did the people talking to you just like surprisingly okay why you are going to to austria where you started in germany and so on so what do you think about that one yeah actually there is some rules and regulations as it's not much differences between the studies in whether it's in austria europe is a total whole continent so um the where you learn it doesn't matter like whether it's in austria it's germany or else in switzerland so all the rules and regulations whether it coming to not only in the studies especially in the development also like in the supermarkets or whatever everything is equal so nothing there is much more comparison between okay this is a small continent and this is a small country and that is a big country there is no differences the education system is quite strict and it's an a unique unique concept so there is no much differences in the education so not only in the education the job sector also in the whether when you go in a different streams in the computers mechanical manufacturing composites electrics and electronics whatever it is the job search is quite the same process it's not like different process but of course it has to be done a lot of hard work and yeah so normally universities train you uh, i mean you will learn a lot of technical skills apart from technical skills you should have some experience so one of the very biggest challenge in this scenarios especially in this 2020 is you have to gain so if you have a good grades in europe it doesn't matter i mean good grades or bad grades it doesn't matter if you have some score below like 60% 70% 80 90 recruiters will not see your scores but they will see your skills so how many skills you are into it and how much knowledge and concepts you have into that and yeah that is the main differences mm-hmm. let me go to the the next question exactly related to this one because this is something for the karima you can talk about that some people they think that uh, because in their own countries Uh, the grades and the notes that you get from the university is very important they will come here to the point to say that hey when you ask them can you introduce yourself just say i did this bachelor master something and this was my notes and this is immediately one of the major things that they will say that how is the situation in morocco if you want to uh, talk about that is the grades and the notes that you get at the university is important uh, yeah so it's actually the same i suppose everywhere you go in the world because your grades do not matter if you go into the job market and once you go through the job interview selection what they look for is the experience the employer wants to know that you can get the job done it, the employer does not care if you get a high grade a high grade in, in uh, your uh, in your studies because that mainly focuses on your memorization because that's the style of uh, learning in universities it's not there isn't that real world practical experience once you step into the job market uh in morocco basically your grades matter if you're going to 
um, apply for another program in other universities, that's when the grades actually matter. Because you go into that competitive selection, what it is actually based on your degrees and the grades. And, you know, uh, are you, uh, did you graduate with honor or with distinction? That's what matters. So basically, when you go from one university to another or mm -hmm. from one program to another, the grades would matter. But if you step into the job market, then, you know, it's all about the experience that you have. Yeah. I'm talking about the getting into the job experience. One of the things that we have at Academics Career Autopilot is the fast way to bring the experience that are relevant to you. Okay. This is actually something that we have because the typical universities, they take a lot of time to bring the main idea. There are books that you need to learn. And at the end of the semester, you're probably going to pass some of the exams and so on. So, Jyotsna, how do you compare this procedure of learning? So, just learning cycle. How do you compare this learning cycle in a normal university and compare it with, with what we are doing at academics? So can you give a kind of, let's say, comparison between yeah. learning systems? Yeah, sure. So normally in the Europe, uh, whether it's, I mean, every universities are like top universities. They are not something like a low grade university or high grade university. So the treatment is like same uh, coming to the education teaching and all even the professors are like very friendly in the universities mm -hmm. but the main comparison between these academics and the professional public universities in germany austria or any other states the thing is that you have to i mean it's a one on one mentoring in academics institute for example if you are feeling shy or if you are if you want to learn more personal sessions and all so academics is one of the good options so that you can if you want to go in any stream and if you want to ask any doubts at any time, I mean, the times are flexible. Even you can do your part-time, you can do your full-time jobs and simultaneously you can also focus on this, uh, on this uh, classes, lecturing classes on what you want to develop your skills and all. Whereas compared to in the university levels, it's like one to 50 people or 60 people and the professors are very busy frankly speaking they do like multiple tasks and they're very busy and they do not have to they do not have too much of time to organize your projects as well it, because i have done some projects and they do not guide you uh, like how many 100 percent like if you are in the basic level also they don't care so you have to start on your own so you have to think on your own and you have to build up and if you stuck somewhere in that the last step they will help you but in academics even if you doesn't have any basic um, concepts on any softwares or any um, subjects as well technical and non-technical managements and all so it's a very good thing that they will teach us especially professor Jawal have teached me a lot of about this non-technical background because i'm from technical uh, the two from mechanical and manufacturing so i'm lack of project management skills and of course uh, some technical skills as well in simulations designs and all but he helped me to how to gain from the basic level to the advanced level so that is one of the good thing that is when compared to the uh, normal public universities and these academics institute uh, can i continue asking you yeah, yeah. another question about that because you're mentioning a few examples of the project that you're doing so what are the examples of the project that uh, or the article that you did? Can you mention a few of them? I think you were doing a few simulation, you built a 3D printer, you did a few article related to FMEA or a few other one. Can you just mention, I mean, in a normal, normal situation at the university, nobody would believe that you can do so many projects at a short amount of time. But can yeah. you just mention it, uh, the, a few list of the things that you've done so far and how was the procedure for doing that? Yeah, yeah. So actually, I did in the university when I'm in the university in the graduation level. So I did only one, two projects in the university. For how so many years? I did for four years. In the total, it's like four years. Yeah. So I did two research projects in the university, technical projects. So after the, because in this competition world, two research projects are not enough, frankly speaking. So it has to be around five, six projects, some research articles, not a simple projects, but it should be value. It should be a valid adieu, not some basic project to do and just publish and all. So in the academics, um, so it's somewhat, it's related to my subject as well, manufacturing, so 3D printing. So the, actually I don't have any design skills in this 3D printing. 3D printing is something 
design plus manufacturing. I mean, design manufacturing and yeah, so testing skills. So I, I'm lack of this design and simulations um, and professor, I mean, at the initial stages, even I have this fear to how to uh, do the projects assembly and part, but professor Chavad, frankly speaking, really, he told me how to do the project on the step-by-step -step basis, like how you can build the 3D printing, how to, with the online mentoring, because many of them might think this online coaching is very difficult for the, um, like many technical aspects. So how to, because in the reality, so everybody were habituated to do the projects on the live and your, with the professors and all, but it's nothing like that. Even if it's an online session, even I was worried how to do these online sessions and all. But like it's it working. It works a lot better compared to this uh, in reality. So yeah, then of course sometimes when because of this corona, we have this digital session in every parts of the world, and this helped me a lot. And I worked on three D printing as I told. So three D printing with the design, simulation, and manufacturing. I'm lack of both skills, design and simulation. So Professor Chawad, we have this uh, Skype sections and it is recording. So it's not like, okay, you have only one hour of time within one hour, one and a half hour, he will be teaching you and he will be going away. So what are the concepts he is trying to say? You can again, rewind it. So in the future, so you can just check the options because nobody can remember that much that one, one, one and a half hour sections, what he told about the software or technical things, whatever it is. So that is one of the good thing you can just rewind and do for the projects according to that. And luckily it worked. And later on, I published an articles in the academics uh, magazines and that helped me a lot in the job search. Yeah. And in parallel to that, I think this was uh, was also a highlight that you received the hardware. So you were working yeah. on the software part and on yeah. the hardware. Of course, this is our responsibility to send you the hardware. So yeah. you received the hardware to work in the to work. Yeah. In the will be, yes, 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 yes. I have supplied everything. I mean, what type of material you want to do the projects. So he will be supplying like if it's two, pro two materials, three, four, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. So if you join in the program, so they will get, they will be providing you this 3D printer. So you can do number of projects as you wish. It depends yeah. upon your capacity and ability, that's it. Yeah, that's exactly very important things that when once you want to do a project, you need to have all of the infrastructure that is relevant to that project. And that's exactly something that we are offering in compared to many universities. So what we offer to the people is not only coaching or talking or theory or the books, if necessary, we provide the software. If necessary, we provide information, project, hardware, and yeah. all of this stuff. So, of course, this, this depends. For example, a person comes from the mechanical engineering, they require hardware, like a 3D printer or electronic for somebody from another engineering. But another person who's working in the other areas, like a marketing or management and so on, doesn't need a hardware, but they need other things. Okay, so let me go to Karima. Um, that um, you have a lot of you had a lot of experience related to medical biomedical engineering, and all of a sudden, in the middle of the program, you wanted to switch to something else. So I want to ask you. I think I asked you several times, but right now this is a good thing. Is that what happened here? You tried to join the program on one topic, and then. In the middle of the program, then you wanted to change your topic. So what happened? Right now, you are an expert in agile management. But let's talk about that story. What happened, Karima, in the beginning? Yeah. So I will give. Uh, I will tell a story briefly. Uh, just so not to confuse the listeners. So uh, yeah, so like I said, I, I do have a background in biomedical sciences. And then when I went on, I, I didn't go directly to graduate studies to do my master's because I wanted to, f to first of all, go through an independent path where I can get uh, practical experience. So I just went on uh, doing internships or traineeships and did some professional experience uh, in medical labs, in the pharmaceutical industry, in hospitals. So I just went on to see what's really going on in real world. And so I started to notice that there's this uh, stagnation into how the the work progresses. So basically you're repeating the same tasks, the same procedures. And so it wasn't challenging enough for me. And I'm multilingual and I, I want to I want to thrive in an international environment. So just stick into that uh, area was somewhat limiting and it was just a one path. 
you know, it's just, it was a one way and it, it doesn't really open a lot of options. And so I did join Cademix on the basis that I want to learn uh, ICT in healthcare and medical engineering. So it was still related to that, but uh, in addition, I get to learn computer aided uh, techno technologies like, uh, you know, information uh, communication technology. Uh, so I thought that would be uh, an added value since uh, the global market is now uh, growing, especially when it comes to digital transformation. So that's the reason. But then you introduced me to the agile management concept and um, I started to learn more about it. And if anything, the kind of like instructions and the way the, um, the way this learning journey is designed, which is to, for the Agile concept to be implemented. So start noticing all of those uh, elements and learning more about the Agile concept and its practices, the values, the principles of it, that got me hooked immediately. And I knew that this actually matches my personality, my values and my skills so much more than the, the background that I have. And if anything, going into this field would actually allow me to work in so many different industries. So there's actually a lot more options and a lot more opportunities for me. I can go and be an agile project manager, even in the healthcare industry. So it was very much not a limiting option or a choice for me. So yeah, that's the reason. That is actually one of the important things that we always mention that what we need to take a look at that if we design a program for, for a person, if you're talking about the personalized program for the people, we are talking about four major things that we need to always take a look at that and update it. These four things that we call the VIPs, values, interests, personalities, and the skills of the people. And these are the things that are changing. I don't believe that somebody's values are changing quickly during the time, but we need to consider a change. So sometimes that the people are changing their values, interests. You might be interested in something because you just started studying that. But during the time, then you see that, okay, right now you're exposed to two, three topics and your interest might be changed. And the same is your personality and skills. If you have a good skills in engineering, it doesn't mean that you need to work in engineering. Who knows? Maybe you are more interested in something else. So it's what it, one of the things that we have, and this is one of the challenges that we have as a mentor to this program. We need to consider all four items, values, interests, personality, and skills of the people that are continuously changing. And we need to be open to change. And this is a kind of the growth mindset that is available here. So let me ask you the next question again, Karima. Talking about this growth mindset or talking about the agile approach, um, you already, uh, you are right now an expert in the area of agile management and so on. But many people think that, oh, agile is just something that is used in software development or something, you know, that engineering. But you are talking about agile mindset. Can you talk a little bit more about that, about the agile mindset and how this can be used in the daily life, in a career development and so on? Yeah, so what most people understand when they hear agile ma project management is that okay, this is gonna be a set of methodologies or practices that need to be learned and then implemented. So each industry applies a certain project management methodology. So that be it Scrum, Kanban or uh, Scrum Ban, which is a combination of both and there's different others. Uh, and, but for a successful implementation of the agile management is actually beyond methodologies. So you could just implement those practices or that met methodology but then the way that you advance the project is not really as efficient or as effective as it would be if you didn't, if you're not equipped with that agile mindset or that growth mindset, which, which, which is a change that really comes from within. Um, so basically it's, it involves around three pillars, which is uh, cooperation and collaboration which is keeping always that communication channel open. If you need anything, you've got to be able to, uh, to be open to ask for help, you know, you have your ideas, share them, get feedback from people, always have that spirit of communicating and collaborating. And the second thing, which is being adaptable and flexible to any changes that may arise. Uh, changes happen all the time. So having the ability to pivot and to bounce back is very important rather than just being stuck. And uh, the other thing, it's, which is to keep track of your progress in real time. So you can actually get to do that within the Agile 
frameworks. So have, keeping those in mind, that's what helps you accelerate the, your projects or the kind of activities that you work on. Because you immediately think of it in a way that, oh, okay, so now I have a setback, but then what is the problem? What is the solution? And you, you need to have a clear goal. You need to be able to navigate all of those uh, uncertainties, all of those ambiguities uh, that, that will inevitably happen. And so being equipped with that mental agility is it's what's going to help you to keep that progress, uh, to keep the, pro uh, the project moving forward in a way that is fast without compromising the quality. There is this major question about the working contract here in Europe. You have applied for many uh, companies here in Europe and some people, they think that, oh, if, you, if I want to continue, for example, in a specific industry, should I go for this industry, that industry, or should I go for a specific university and so on? So what would be uh, the approach that you think it might be suitable? Do you, do you recommend the people to be flexible when they are talking about um and they're talking about different options and so on or what's your experience at the moment yeah i mean coming to the working contract it's like initially it will be like limited contract if 100 uh, percent job placement means uh you it's not it's not like compulsory i mean you will be getting a job without having no efforts right so if it is also a good um companies large scale or small scale industries or a startup companies they will be checking you how you are working for, ex for instance for example if we take uh, you know somebody somebody some head of the department or team leader recruiter so he will be with the reference you will be going to join in that company but after that one month or two months if you are not performing your skills well even they will remove you from this contract so, because companies need a person who is an added value, not someone like just normally sitting and having getting a salary and all. So, it depending upon your effects and all. And the yeah, of course, the contract is like there are unlimited contracts. It's nothing like they will be removing you and all. Initially, there is like a provision period. So, um, for instance, for com some companies might uh, give you like three months, one month, and uh, six months. For me, it's like one month only. So within one month, uh, you don't need to show all your skills. At least you are just a little bit how much uh, efficient and how much interest you are showing towards the company um, and their pro on, on their projects. So after that, it's like a permanent contract. So nobody is going to take you remove because there is this very strong rules that without having a uh, proper statement, they cannot remove from any contracts, whether it's uh, engineers, whether it's uh, coming to the low grade, like uh, technicians or scientists or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, one of the goodest thing. And coming to the visas in Europe, uh, after getting a job, visa is not that difficult compared to United States yes. yes. or else Canada or else Australia or whatever it is. Once you get a job and the contract, it's very easy to get a blue card or a red card or whatever it is, depending upon your job, contract list. That's the thing. So what we usually do in academics is also to review the contract. This is actually something that is very important. So for example, once you receive a contract, a, a draft of a contract, that's actually something that we can review it together in a meeting so that we can talk about that. So do you think that this is actually a good service that we added into our program? Or what is your experience with that one? I think you received this contract yes. and then yes, yes, yes. After actually, discussing all of this stuff together, all of the items and so on. Do you think this is an added value to? Yeah, yeah, sure. Actually, I got a contract which is of 15 pages. So even I don't have that, that, much, of, that much of patience. The to... contract was... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even I do not have that much of patience to read all the contract. And of course, I read some points, but I didn't understand that totally because I'm not uh, especially from the European states. I'm from India. So the contracts are very different and all. So we have taken around one and a half to two hours. Professor Chawad have explained me each and every point of every page. What is your contract? What is your salary? And how it will affect on your future and also it's one of the good service that you will not get from any other consultancies. Even if you have some consultancies in Europe and they do not focus on your um, working contract and other services, if you need some other help, just they yeah. will take your resume. If you have a master degree or bachelor degree or whatever, and they will keep it 
it in your in their databases that's it they will not do any modifications or upgrade your cvs or everything else but here you will have your you will be studying you will be having the projects on the practical things right now what is going in the markets and all you will, other than that you will be also having this um other added services like reviewing the contracts cv checks cover letter because in europe cv and cover letters are one of the most most important things that recruiters will be watching you because yeah. many of them will, will be applying so that is one of the things so even professor javals have like i mean helped me like three four times in reviewing my cv and cover letter even yeah. though i know the standard template and all yeah that is one of the goodest things Yeah. yeah that's actually something that we need to do that this is something that uh, we should take the responsibility to do that um i don't believe that this is a responsibility of a normal university to take a look at the contract for you or to update your cv or to give you a kind of let's say multiplied version of your recommendation letter and so on but at academics this is a part of the program so we are responsible toward your success and that's the reason we need to make sure that how many cvs you have how you can upgrade your cvs how change your this stuff and of course when it comes to the working contract of course we need to review it and discuss it together transparent yes uh, sorry to interrupt in the middle and even in europe like if you want to show your cv and cover letter just to upgrade or make some changes in it because everybody are not that fluent in english or german even i'm not that That's fluent in english Yeah, but so uh, those people will try to charge like fifty euros, hundred and two hundred euros. Even they will be charging. But in this program, everything is included. It's not like only one part. It's like A to Z. So everything will be included in the program. That is one of the very good thing. Even if you are from, uh, for example, if you are from technical, something from mechanical or electronics, and if you want to shift your career to like how Karima did, so if you want to move your career to the computers and all, so it is one of the good thing you can also shift, and you can find an opportunities. It's not like you are sticking to the one direction, and uh, you cannot even find the jobs in this competitive world. Yeah. Yeah, I would also like to add that. one of the highest values that you get to have with academics is that you get access to resources that you would find very difficult to find elsewhere because let's say that you find uh, some problems in either visa regulations or in all of the whole process of the career development either in with your uh, with your cv with your cover letter uh with moving to a european country with your job contract whatever it is you will find or within the job interview or the job search strategies whatever it is you will you will have a lot of challenges and you will have a lot of questions and that you would be confused because you would not know where to find the answers but then at academics especially with your guidance with the uh, dr javed's guidance you get a customized response that is adaptable for you and that is up to date because you can also get insights to what's happening in today's european job market so that's a high added value yeah yeah this is this is something that we wanted to design the program in a way that we offer the maximum support but that's actually something that jyotsna also mentioned very well that if you want to improve your cv of course you can go to some uh, cv advisors and so on but the cv advisors cannot give you a recommendation letter they cannot give you a certificate they cannot give you a project or i don't know hardware and that's exactly the point there is a difference between that people that are giving you a part of your solution and the people that are giving you the whole solution so that's actually there is a huge difference if you want to get a part of your solution from somebody and then maybe another part of your solution from another another per, another person then of course this would not be homogeneous it will not be working together so it would be quite an advantage if you have one person or one organization giving you the whole solution rather than taking the cv advice from person a and giving the certificate from person b and then another service from the other person c and legal advice from one person d this might not be compatible to each other and that is actually one of the major problems that we see in the past from the other uh, competitors and so on so this is very important that all of the services and advices that you get are somehow compatible to each other not that somebody telling you hey go and do this project the other one says oh remove that topic from your cv this is paul here could i ask you a question sure please go ahead go ahead paul okay uh, so i'm actually asking on behalf of the candidate avinash here uh, so he has completed his masters in uh, product design in uk 
Okay. Okay. So uh, if he is actually taking up this program, should he go for a one year uh, program or should he go for a three month program? How is it? I think this question is, is, is asked from me, but at the same time, I think the other uh, Jyotsna or Karima can yeah, yeah. answer that question, but I will give you my, my answer. The point is that our program is, has a goal. It has a set of the things that we want to define. So the set of the goals that we define is to finding a job. So if we want to define this program, we will not rather go for a timing. It actually depends on how the people are engaged in this program and how much uh, you know, that activity you have. As Giotsna said that uh, this program took uh, three months for Giotsna, but nobody knows, maybe six months it will take for another person and one year for the other one. We cannot define the time as one of the first thing that we are going to fix because time is not an important thing for us. If you want to ask what kind of program, we would just usually say that the academics career autopilot is probably a suitable uh, program for the person, but it probably takes something between three months to one year, but this is flexible. Okay. Um, let me ask this question from Giotsna. Giotsna, when you wanted to join the program, did you, did you consider this question? So did you have these things in your mind? Okay. How long will it take for you? And when yeah, yeah. this is this Actually, question, I want to answer it. I think you have the answer. Can you answer? Yeah. Actually, the question which like Avinash have asked the same question. I don't know, Professor, whether you already remember it that I asked like within how many months it will take for me. For me, the maximum is six months. This is what initially I told in our first Skype and Rio call. So how it is and all. And you told like it depends upon your efforts, efforts and how much time you are keeping for this program. Because if you want to do your part-time jobs, full-time jobs, apart from that, you have to concentrate on this as well. So the more amount of time you are keeping in this, I don't know, like 40 hours per week, 35 hours per week, it depends upon your timing. So your resume will be uh, starting in posting up. So gradually. So depending upon that, it might take three months. I mean, four months, five months. Or But the final concept is that you will be getting a job. It might take a little time. It's not like, okay, you will get your 100, but no, we are not saying like within one month or two months, you will get a job. You will get a job, but it will take a little bit time. For me, it's taken just three to four months. Actually, I thought six months, frankly speaking, but I afforded too much of time. So like I just uh, didn't went to part-time for two months in the month of Jan, February, and I managed to concentrate more of my time in writing my articles in the academics program and doing the projects. I just kept in the resume and I got a interview calls. I mean, um, in January, February, I uh, kept a lot of timing scheduled for this program. But for the March and April, I tried to apply to the companies. I got five to six interview calls for that. And out of five to six interview calls, trust me, guys, I mean, they have asked me about what is your role in the academics. They have asked me. And other important thing is that in this program, you can also learn how to answer to the recruiters. One question like why you have chosen Germany, why you have chosen Austria, what is the difference? These questions have they are already the recruiters have asked me in this um, that during my job search. So luckily I got this mock interviews with this professor and luckily it worked and the same answers I have given there and yeah, and luckily it worked, yeah. Thank you, Jyotsana. Uh, Avinash, could you take over and you know probably ask you questions that you have in your mind? Yes, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for asking the question on my behalf. Also, thank you, Jodi, for answering this question. Uh, one question which I have is that uh, if, if I'm coming to Europe for studying or for job, is it necessary for me to know some other language uh, other than English and my mother tongue? Is it, uh, how does it impact my job search there? Um, should I say, Professor? Yeah, just go ahead. I have also yeah, an answer. Yeah. I think uh, Karima can also talk about yeah, yeah. that. Because though he's start. from, as he said, from design and product development, right? So the yeah. course is, uh, there is a small differences when you go to the stream of computers. It's like, it's not, you don't need to focus much. Like A1, A2 basic level is uh, necessary because I have a lot of friends. They are in that direction. They do not need that much. But especially in the field of mechanical designing and all, they have to learn a, a German as much as possible, like until like intermediate level, B1 level. So even I did my um, B1 level in India, 
and after that again i came to germany and did some courses on till the b1 level so which is like very important of course you no need to speak fluently in front of the recruiters so they just expect you uh, talking so that you can uh, make some conversation friendly talk in the future so obviously english is a fluent uh, from india so everybody will speaking that but uh, it's a very added value it's, it has to, i would say it's a must and it's a mandatory thing for for our field especially yeah. okay uh, my question here would be uh, so in that case would the language learning be part of the program in uh, the auto ca career pilot career auto pilot Yes, we have we have this technical language program included in the in the program. So if you take a look at the list of the programs that we have at Academics, we usually give the people the four options that they can focus on. So maybe we can take a look at it on my background. So the people joining the Academics Career Autopilot, they are advised to pick up four topics as the major topics. So at the end, you have some sort of flexibility to choose what is important for you. And probably one or two topics will be the most important thing for you. But apart from that, there is also something. So what we usually tell the people that should be focused is basically Tech Career Acceleration Program is the number one everybody good for everybody. The Tech Career Acceleration Program helps you to improve your CV and improves your way of talking to the people and so on. Agile management is actually something important in a way that we are handling the project and so on. So these are like a, not like say separate courses or classes. These are just like an integrated way of handling the project and bringing you the thing. And apart from that one, then you can choose, for example, what is important for you. We have technical language course, we have digital marketing, or we have... Uh, 3D printing topics or computational topics and so on. We usually advise the people to have four topics in, in their mind. Um, otherwise, we will usually focus at least on two to three to keep the people multidisciplinary. This is something that is very important that sometimes the, the candidate, they forget that they need to be multidisciplinary. So this is a task of a mentor. This is our, our responsibility to make sure that the CV of a person is, has the balance a balance between technical and non-technical, a balance between managerial, non-managerial, a balance between the investing the money and really generating the money when it comes to, for example, marketing activities and selling and the way that they are talking, presenting and all of this stuff. So there are lots of balance that are required. And one of these balance are language. We need to make sure that the person can talk fluently in some of the good languages. Even a person is quite fluent in English, they probably they need to improve their, their English as well. Beside that, of course, there might be points that we take a look at the jobs and these jobs are written in German. So slowly you see that the people start picking the other language. But of course, if the people they have, they already know lots of languages and so on, this is something that we are not pushing that forward. So that's actually kind of let's say, integrated in all of the programs together, okay? This is something that we have. Was it the answer to your questions or should we continue asking the same question? Karima, do you want to talk something about that one? I think you are a multi-talented <laughs> language. Uh, Karima, your, your microphone. Microphone off? Yeah, yeah, it's working now. Okay, uh, so yeah, I'm multilingual and I'm currently learning German. So I'm focusing on the basics. I've already covered the basics of German and now I'm more focused on the technical uh, side of it. Uh, I don't think that not knowing the, la the German language would be a barrier, especially if the kind of jobs are more oriented towards uh, internationalism. So for, for me, it's... Uh, because I work within the management and digital marketing. So mostly I am in contact with international people. And so the language that I use the most is English. But uh, if you were to apply in, in, in a job that is required to have a German language, the, the most, I think the first thing that you would cover is just the technical, the technical German language. You don't have to learn to speak it. It's just, it, it just has to be on a conversational level and then understanding the technical language that is used in the job. So it should not, you should not view it as a barrier. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, thank you, Jotsana. Thank you, Karima. And thank you, Jawad, for that. Uh, just want to summarize it for Avinash. Maybe if you can correct me. So basically, if somebody has, like Avinash has completed a master's degree, he still has to take you know, a couple of programs, maybe four or five, that would actually get him a job. And one of that would be the technical language. So uh, a technical language course, it could be German, it could be any of the other European languages where 
the roles that he is actually looking for could be available. Yeah. I'm correct. Yeah. Okay, Avinash, is that clear to you? Yes. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and also... small information as well. Like I would also say, like small information. Like the like recently happened. Like my job at job at Rio. So it's like seventy percent. It's in English, but thirty percent they have uh, just checked my German skills. So they didn't expect my fluency level or something else. But yeah, like twenty to thirty percent. Like whether you are trying to communicate with them or not. So that's it. It's not like hundred percent. You have to be fluent and and all. Yeah. Maybe maybe I can add this stuff to that one. Um, most of the time in Germany and Austria, they don't have uh, intention to check the level of your language skills in German. Rather than that, exactly as Jyotsna said, they want to check whether you are open to learn German or not. That's actually the main question. So the main question is not to really to check whether you know grammar and so on. This is not the question. The main question is that they are going to ask you a couple of questions just to make sure. Are you an open person or not? Because this society accepts the openness of basically, this is a kind of, let's say, a very huge added value. It's among the soft skills. Are you open to learn new things or not? Are you open to learn a new language? And this can be a technical language, like a MATLAB programming Python, or learn a new local language and so on. They are just checking that one. Are you open or not? That is actually the most important thing. And apart from that, nobody who cares about the grammar of the German. Grammar of the German is very difficult. And nobody would expect from you that you are talking fluently in German. This is difficult language and everybody knows it. And this is absolutely, I mean, if you can say, hello, how are you in five words and two sentences, that's fine. Just try to push and show them. And then we usually, during the program, we usually have a specific interview, uh, questions, well-prepared, a few questions and so on. And of course, you also need to know a few technical words related to your skills. So if you're talking about the design, then you need to know a few words about uh, design in German. Can you say a few yeah. sentences about that or not? That's actually the expectation. Yeah, I got that. Thank you uh, so much for that. One of the major things that we have in the list, in the next question in the list is the cost of the program. Some of the people say that the cost of this program is huge in compared to the other cost of the program and the cost of the living in Europe. So we changed and updated the payment plan and the way that we are doing this kind of payment in the program. So at the moment, uh, the latest changes like this, that if whenever we are talking about the total amount of money and so on, the people can start by doing the 20% payment in the program and then the rest of that during the program and 60% at the end of the program. Now, I want to ask this question because I think Jyotsna, you were talking with lots of applicants here do you think yeah. that this is uh, this is a good idea to receive 60% of the money at the end once the people they get a job or what do you think about that? Yeah, uh, even when I started the program, even I felt like it's huge because I lived in Germany for four years, more, more than four years. So I was lack of the money. So other than doing part-time job, I cannot uh, just afford to for this program. So after that, I just have taken my own risk. So because every person has to take their own risk. Other than we can't find a like comfort level of getting a good job with good salary and all. So I have taken the risk and I have joined with this program. And yeah, it's a good thing because I I mean, I asked why it is like too much of cost. But yeah, they have said that. I mean, Professor Jawal have said me that uh, you will be having a package of minimum more than 40,000. So that is one of the good thing in Europe, where it's in Switzerland, Austria, Germany. So the package will be more than 40,000. So that paying this amount is not that difficult. That is one of the good thing. And the second thing is that you can also give this referral option as well. So in this academics program, there is a a referral option. So for example, if you find a job, so you will be definitely telling to like five, six people. So because you are they, you are there i mean you already have this proof right so they will trust you and yeah if you refer them like four to five people obviously you don't need to pay like five thousand euros so it will be reduced a little bit so that's one of the good things so the point is many of the people will think that okay it's ten thousand fifteen thousand so i have to pay ten thousand fifteen thousand it's a, like a huge amount but at the end like uh, after getting a job you will not pay that much you will pay very less compared to that what you are expecting. That is one of the things. 
Can I ask another question from you, Jyotsna? If you're comparing yeah. the real amount of the payment that you are doing in compared to the real yeah. uh, salary that you have, can you give a little bit of percentage and comparison amounts uh, comparing your, uh, let's say, your future salary in compared to the real amount that you are actually paying in euros and so on and so forth? Can you give a kind of comparison? Uh, the total investment in this program, how much yeah. is that in compared to the salary of one year, two years that you will get in the future? Yeah. So normally my salary package is around like 42,000 approximately euros per year. And yeah, initially I paid some 2,440 euros, something like that for uh, in the month of January that, that also. So yeah, I initially paid as a total 2,400 or something. And later on still, I got like referrals. I referred like two, three people. So it reduced some under 3000 for me. So I think I have to pay some something like another 5000 and I'm looking for the students. And of course, if I find them, I no need to pay that much of amount. It's not in reality, you will be not paying that much when you got the job. Definitely you will say to many people. So that is one of the good thing in this program. Yeah. Can I ask you something uh, again about this rest payment? Because we have 60% rest payment planned for you. Do you plan to pay the 60% or do you want to really find, I don't know, six six people here? Which one is easier? I was trying for the people, frankly speaking, yeah, because everything is a money, right? So I was trying to do some marketing and yeah, still now I'm trying. So from July, August, I mean, from last two months, I was trying to, because I didn't even told before joining this program, I didn't told to anyone because even I don't know if this program is true, real, or it's a registration, frankly speaking, professor. I don't know. So I thought a lot of things about this program because I don't have any reference to ask anybody because it was founded in 2019, right? Yeah. So that is the thing. But yeah, also just I have taken a risk and tried to apply it. But yeah, later on it worked. And then I told to my batchmates who has done their master's. So recently, yeah, two persons have already joined in this program. And yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, having this referral option. Yeah. And by the way, this referral option is considered as a multi-level marketing. And we have lots of uh, latest versions of the multi-level marketing. And these are the things that we are changing, updating in the time. Let me ask uh, Karima. Karima, right now you are an expert in the area of marketing and you understand the very deep uh, level of what we are doing exactly on this stuff and you are very highly in engaged in all of these activities to define the campaigns and all of this stuff can you say something a little bit about this marketing what we are doing and what's the uh, let's say background behind it maybe you can also tell about your experience and the type of the campaigns that you are doing, running and activities and so on the activities that you are doing at the moment and so on yeah so basically we're focusing to uh, help understand the people understand uh, the focus of the program, the career autopilot, autopilot program, which is uh, which is heavily focused on uh, delivering the values that the job seekers are looking for, or people that are looking to integrate the job market in Europe, uh, or going through a career change, a career upgrade. So basically, you're trying to explain to them that you get the whole package in Kedemix that is very much customized and catered to your needs and requirements and what you're looking for. And you get access to resources, either software or hardware. So this is mainly what the campaign is targeted still to help people understand that these are the kind of values that you would get. And when it comes to the investments in terms of the money, uh, we also have to understand that you do have the option of refer, refer and earn money or a fee reduction. And also this, and we try to help them understand that this is an investment that you put in yourself. And the end goal is to find a job. So basically the return on investment is going to be positive because you will get your, your you will start earning a salary, you start ha uh, having an income, which basically you will be able to compensate the, the, the price of the program because that's the end goal of the program. And so, yeah, so that's what we try to help people to understand. Yeah. By the way, from the financial perspective, if you are talking about return on invest, which is very important, you need to take a look at how much 
time and how much money and effort you invested in a program and what is the real result of that. For example, you can take a look at that. I think at the moment I want to go back again to Giotsna talking about yeah. return of investment because you did a few investments. One first investment for you was to invest in your education in India. A second investment was to do another education in Germany. And the third investment was to join academics. So if yeah. you compare the investment that you had in compared to the return on investment, how do you compare the return on investment on each of these, these things? And for example, maybe you can compare yourself with somebody who did not join academics and they need to return back to India after finishing their study in a normal university. So how do you compare this return on investment? Yeah. Yes, actually, like something, yeah, as you told, initially, I did my bachelor's, I, for my bachelor's also, I have taken some loan, after that, for my master's, I have taken loan of, uh, like, how many euros, it's like, yeah, 11,000 euros I have taken, the education loan, so, still, I have to pay for that, just waiting for the right job as well, of course, if I be in India, I, it takes me, like, around, I don't know, like, another, 10 years, frankly speaking, so to pay this all money and all, but this is one of the advantage in Europe, even though it's like a huge, little bit more expensive and more cost, you can pay within one year. So within like every month I can pay. So within one, like 10 months is, I think 10 months is also more than enough. So if you pay thousand euros per month, like those 10 months, it will be fine. So the salaries are very good. Not only, I mean, it's not uh, stick to one stream. Okay, as in the computers, they'll be getting this much salary and in mechanical, it will be less and electrical, it will be less or so medium. It's not like that, it's for equal. Even there is like a standard uh, rules and protocols for that. Like for even for the laborers and technicians, they has to give this minimum wage. So it's not like they do this, they do, they doesn't have that much of uh, skills and uh, the studies and all like bachelor. So he's a bachelor guy. I have to give him a less depending upon on also. So that is one of the good thing. Yeah, as I told, the, the investment initially might take a little bit time and yeah. So you have to take a small risk, but later on you will feel a lot of relief after that. Even as I told. I didn't uh, expect like uh, how can I pay this so much of the amount because I had this lot of questions in my mind and I ate I also ate the brain of Professor Java like three four times in the meetings especially like how this works and all yeah that is one of the good thing and yeah and also like there is a tax claims are also be possible in yeah. this Europe that is one of the good thing frankly speaking in these four years even I don't know like how to claim this taxes and all and yeah in this program even you joined in this after um, getting your salaries for one year in the year month you can also claim your taxes so like if you pay some around like I don't know like if you're 10,000 euros or 15,000 you can claim and you will get one third of the amount back it's not like you are losing the total amount from the academics program or else from the masters or whatever it is yeah. this is this this last item that you that you mentioned is actually one of the important thing that uh, usually you don't get this this kind of information they were like a financial planning the tax claims and all of this stuff if you want to just consider only i mean forget all of the services that we have only consider this single service of the financial planning and tax claim and all of this stuff and information about that one. This can worth you within two years will 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 probably bring you something in the range of 10,000 euro. That's high. That's high. Which, means yeah, that, which means that exactly the amount of the payment that you are doing, if you are paying the whole amount of money in terms of cash, actually this only this one of the services that we have in this kind of legal services and tax services and so on that we offer can co cover all of the payments that you have. So the return of investment will be, I mean, forget all of these jobs and everything that can, can be done. So actually this is a package that we are offering and I'm not aware of any university, I repeat, I'm not aware of any university or even organizations um, helping the people with such kind of information. This is the result of basically our experience and we are sharing that since we wanted to have a comprehensive program, this comprehensive includes the legal service, tax, tax services and other kind of mentoring, coaching and so on. Even for the other people, we also helping them when they want to buy an accommodation, but of course buying a, a property and so on, 
this is another kind of services that can also cost the people. Because once you get a job and you have a 40,000 euro salary fixed, immediately you can start buying um, 200,000, 300,000 um, house basically for yourself. This is another thing that is valuable. So once you have the job offer, parallel to job offer, other things are coming. Let's say tax return are coming then the visa security is coming, financial security is coming, the huge loan that you can receive here from the bank with a very, very minimum interest rate is coming and all of this stuff. So it's not just the job offer. It's actually the opening up a gate to success in Europe. And that's actually something that the people need to consider that. So the next question that we have is about the ease of application. How difficult is the procedure of applying Academics. I wanted to ask maybe both of you, uh, starting from Karima. Karima, how difficult was it to apply and get in touch and start the program at Academics? Can you say that? How was that? Right from the beginning, start completely from zero. How was that? Not difficult at all. A fast response, uh, minimum bureaucracy even to zero bureaucracy. I didn't have to send any, fi any files, any documents via post, everything is digital. And uh, the interview uh, appointment can be taken very quickly, which means you don't have to wait a lot of time. Uh, so the response is very fast. And also you get assistance and guidance throughout the next steps. So it's very easy actually, no hassle at all. Can you give a kind of, let's say, timetable? How long did it take from the first contact until you practically started the program? It was just about uh, two weeks, that's all, two weeks. So two weeks of, uh, uh, it was first of all to book an appointment, to have that online interview session uh, where you ask me questions about joining the, the program, what, what, what are my interests, what, do I, what are my career goals, and just to clarify uh, those initial things. And then uh, I receive a welcome package. So I get the time to uh, fill in the welcome package where I'm, um, where I'm asked about my values, my skills, my personality, uh, my interests. So those kind of questions are actually also eye-openers because you get to know a lot about yourself and what is it that, what are your strengths and where, where you lack. So those actually help. And yeah, and, send, and then of course the, the bank sent in the money and that was just about two weeks and that's it. And I started my journey with Kanemix, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jyotsna, what was your experience from the time that you decided to join Kanemix? Actually, you had some time before that you were contacting right actually before that, but once you had the payment or let's say once you had the money to to start the program, how was the procedure and how was, was the start of the real start of the program? Yeah, uh, well, actually, as Karima said, it didn't take too much of time, maximum it's like two weeks, even for me as, as well, it's, uh, it's like two weeks. So first, uh, even I would say for the other guys who want to join the program, first I would say to thoroughly read about the academics program in that, especially there is a column called FAQ section. So frequently asked questions. So in that you will be having everything about the job placement, visa process, about the financial background, everything you will be having. So once I got this uh, confident and all, then I started uh, the program uh, with Professor Chavez. Like, uh, yeah, like we have one to Skype meetings in that I also got this welcome package. And after getting the welcome package, I read each and every point clearly so what is mentioned in the program. So even I suggest everybody to read the program. So everything is transparent. Nothing is to uh, hide or give some sugar coating things about the program and all. So it's you can read everything about the program and read after that. Yeah. So you can slowly, you can sign the contract and send it back. And yeah, so that it's like a flexible, everything is digital. So after signing the contract, you can send it through email and then yes, yeah, you can start uh doing your journey with the academics program and, and i started yeah in the december i started december mid so after the christmas from january i was alerted so from jan feb i was too focusing on the program and yeah and march april i got the opportunities and the call entry of calls yeah and again i'm mentioning the thing is that 
you have to keep your own efforts of course it's a 100% job placement but without keeping your efforts nothing is possible in this world not only in the academics but everything everywhere that is one of the most important thing yeah yeah and just to to comment on the last thing that you said because i get people sometimes ask me uh what guarantees me that i'm going to find a job what guarantees me they're going to find this sort of like a guaranteed thing within a, a very limited timeline and i always say it's not whether the program is going to work for you. It's actually, are you going to work for the program? Because you yeah. are going to meet your end goal for sure. But how much work are you putting in? That's what's going to determine how fast you are going to reach that end goal. So it's not whether it's going to work for you. It's are you willing to work for it? That's the question. That's true. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, I can totally, I can totally confirm what what you guys said uh, about the the effort. The program is guaranteed program, which means that at the end, sooner or later, you will find a job. But when once you put an effort on this program, then you get a job faster. They get you get the goal faster. You can reach the intermediate goal faster, and so on. And this is actually a matter of self responsibility. You need to really have this self awareness. And we recommend this program to the people who are really self aware and taking the responsibility. A responsibility means that in one of the meetings we have a few tasks, and then uh, then you should really start to learn. You need to do the act and all of this stuff. But uh, let me ask, um, uh, because Karima, you are here, maybe I can ask you this question. Typically, we have the meeting. What's happening in one of the meetings when you have? So starting from once you need a meeting, can you tell them what is the procedure to request a new meeting? And uh, what's, what's happening in one of the meetings? Can you just describe it? Because sometimes we have the meeting. And I don't know, um, can you say it from yourself, is everything planned before the meeting or not? Yeah, so uh, when you, uh, if a candidate wants to book a meeting, it's very easy as well. You just go to the academics uh, calendar and then you book the, ne the next uh, available slot, which is very easy. And so basically because beforehand you are given a set of instructions or sort of uh, activities or projects that you wanna work on. And so because these, set of instructions are designed in a way that can be implementable in an agile way. So they're broken into actionable uh, tasks that can be reviewed repeatedly. And so you, you get those instructions or those, those activities and you work on them. And then if you have any kind of questions or challenges, or if you wanna keep track of your project, you wanna review what you've done, you wanna get a feedback. So it's that process is very easy. You just book a meeting and then uh, you get a consultation session with Dr. Javad where you get a clear guidance uh, without being overwhelmed uh, with details. So you're not going to get confused. You get the advice, you, you get a, a very honest uh, feedback about the work and uh, you know how you're progressing. And so if there is anything that needs to be adjusted or changed, so you go ahead and you implement it immediately. And so you keep continuing the project and after every cycle, of, or after every activity or project that you work on, there is always something that you learn. There is never something that you will fail on, that, you, that you're going to fail or it's not gonna work. There is always something that you're going to learn. And so as you start another activity or as you start another project, you take that feedback and you work on something new, but in, the, in an upgraded way. So you never, you never fail at anything. It's, if anything, you just keep growing your skills, you just keep growing your knowledge after every cycle that you go through. And so that's the kind of agile learning culture that we have at academics. Very good, very good. Uh, what is your experience, for example, uh, Jyotsna, what's your experience, for example, when we are talking about uh, writing an article? Yeah, yes, like, yes, I mean, I do not have any experience on writing articles. This is the first article I'm writing. So I didn't even write in English, I mean, sorry, in India or else uh, here. So I was very nervous to start writing an article in the magazine. I don't even know how to write in this WordPress and using search engine optimization and all. As I told earlier, everything is a recording uh, videos, lectures and all. So once you got the session, everything is recorded so that you can repeat it again. 
and yes of course you have helped me how to write these articles using because everybody is not fluent even i am not fluent in the english on how to write and use the correct words and all the first article you helped me on how to write and how to maintain the structures because the job market it's very important of writing these articles actually they have asked me about the articles frankly speaking they have asked me as well so yes the first article i got suggestion from professor chavad on how to orient the structure and all and yeah the next three four articles i have written on my own that is which which is one of the good thing yeah, yeah. um just now you mentioned that the first article that we practically writing together was difficult for you but the next article you wrote it by yourself and all of this yeah. stuff so this um moving from the first article can you give a little bit of time table how long did it yeah. take for you for the first article to develop the procedure of learning and then how fast you were in the second and third article i think right now you have like four articles written yeah, yeah. in the academics magazine but can you give a little bit of time table about how long did it took for the first time and how much yeah. was the second one third one and so on yes the first article has taken me a time of 5 days 5 days like i was trying to work out how to write i mean how you will be reacting even i don't know the structure and also i was trying i was being very nervous on writing the article so it has taken me a time but of course as the program autopilot means it's like fast so everything will be in a fast rapid way so after the first article the second article has taken just for me like one and a half day to write and publish it it didn't take too much yeah the first time it will take definitely a time because we are not robots we are humans so the first time it will take a little bit time but the, the same approach it doesn't take too much of time from the second time it will be like very easy not that difficult of uh, publishing the articles and all yeah I'm also going to ask you another question here which is related to agile action. I remember yeah. that once uh, you came back and you said that I want to have an article related to FMEA because there was a job related yeah. to that one. Can you tell the story from your side? Yes, like if somebody is from totally technical field and they do not have this management skills like project management skills or project management like projects if you want to do if you do not have because companies everywhere in the country every is like every company needs a person who is multi talented it's not like if you have a good score or you have good experience in this sector and field so you will get a job so you have to attract the clients and the customers so that is one of the biggest role and how much effort you have kept in your technical part that much effort you have also should keep it in this uh, non technical parts as well so of course in the the large scale and small scale companies whatever it is they will specially see your how you are interacting with the people how you can attract the people and all so even i even in my interview calls i got these type of questions and i told perfectly how it works why i have chosen specially academics program because technical parts we can learn in every public universities and private universities but nobody will help you in teaching these uh, non technical skills in this in this way because i have seen like many people got rejected because of this non technical agile approaches and all because uh, you do not have the skills and yeah it's a, we are looking for a person who is like multi talented so this is one of the good thing so i have written i have seen some jobs on this so i have written some fmea fine um something related to process optimization and management related things so i have written an article and i published and of course you no need to be that fluent in that area but okay the recruiters will know that okay you have some basic concepts and you are also aware and you are writing an article means they know that you are studying a lot about that thing and they will definitely take that into their consideration yeah exactly and that's exactly the concept of acceleration when we are talking about the career acceleration is that usually when you are talking about a normal article writing uh, for example at the universities uh, they would be totally shocked if you are talking about finishing an article within a week or i don't know a month or something so usually they are writing an article as a result of one year usually so but the point is that you don't need to write all original articles there are different kind of articles available there are magazine articles original articles journal articles isi articles so there are different kind of thing and there are articles that are going to help you in your career to get a job and that is not a kind of let's say journal article that is required so that's actually something that the people sometimes 
are totally mixed up. They want to apply and get a research position at the university. And if you ask them, okay, how many articles you have? Just say, okay, I have two articles. How, how long did it take for you? Just say, hey, it took me four years to write these two articles. And then at the end of the day, they don't have, let's say, relevant articles. So from that point of view, this acceleration is very much different than the typical old way of writing the articles and you know that research original articles and so on that's not necessarily better than this this kind of let's say quick magazine articles and so on so these are the the differences that we have anyway yeah, yeah yes. and i can also mention one thing it's like not like a consultancy so consultancy is totally different because professor jawad is he is a doctorate he has a lot of experience in the teaching field so he is no in every sector, how the education works. So not uh, just he's like, uh, does, I mean, normally if you see the consultants uh, inside or outside the Europe, they don't know anything about the job market much and how it is. So here you will know everything and how to, and which aspect and where you want to increase your skills, you can increase. So, I mean, theoretically and practically we have an evidence so he has also written like more publications like 34 35 publications scientific publications i'm saying not magazines or something else yeah and you can also check it out this is the trust i have taken and joined in the institute yeah well thank you thank you for mentioning that writing 30 articles and so on i can tell you of course each of those articles are result of let's say a half a year or one year of project if it's not more than that but at some point, you need to have a balance between the technical article, let's say deep scientific article and magazine article. That's actually something that is required. Um, of course, those kind of detailed article, like a research article are required if you want to get a professor position at the university, they take a look at that. But these days, they usually take a look at the balance between the journal and scientific articles and the magazine type of article that are more related to the marketing and customer oriented and so on. So if you have this kind of balance, it's also required for having a, a professor position. Um, maybe 20 years ago, it was like this, that the professors could always say that, oh, I have 20 articles or something related to, I don't know, scientific thing. But these days, even for a professor position, they take a look at both kind of articles. The deep scientific articles, uh, you know, that's like a original research and the magazine article. So even for us, it's important to have a kind of balance between the. For you that you are not applying for a professor position, if you want to decide, you need to choose. Do you want to invest one year on writing a research article in an ISI journal, or do you want to invest one week and get a magazine article? You need to take a look at the investment of your time and return on invest to see that which one is going to help you better. And that's the decision you have. Let me ask the next question from Karima. When it comes to doing actions, at some points we are talking about 20 different actions and then you need to decide which action that you are taking brings more uh, revenue, basically brings more return on invest and this stuff. So how do you discuss in your mind, how do you plan that once you have a lot of actions to do, lots of options that you do, maybe there are five articles that you can write, how do you decide which one is going to be the best, which one has the highest priority when it comes to taking actions? Yeah, so basically I prioritize my project or my task based on their importance during that time uh, where I'm going to uh, work on them. And, and basically because I clarify my goals from the get-go. So I do the SMART goal, so I know exactly the target uh, and what I'm trying to reach. So based on the changes, on the circumstances that are happening, because changes happen, you know, there are new systems, new technologies, new conditions, there's also always new things coming up. So based on that, I try to figure out what is it that I'm going to prioritize so I can keep advancing towards that goal. So basically, when if I'm going to choose a topic, uh, to write about, I'm going to choose based on what's the topic that is being discussed more, you know, in today's world. What's what's trending? What's being targeted towards my uh, the, the job that I want to work in, or the kind of like uh, job tasks that I will have. So, what is it that will bring me more knowledge? So that's what I try to focus on. So basically, that's how I prioritize. Yeah. The, the Can I ask one more question here? This is something that you mentioned very quickly. I think this is many people didn't realize that you mentioned smart goals. Can you say what yeah. is the meaning of smart? 
Yeah, so it's an acronym. It means that the goals that you set have to be specific. You need to uh, put a number to them. It helps a lot. Don't be so vague about them. Uh, so, and measurable, which means that you, you need to be able to track the progress. So uh, by uh, having those key performance indicators, so to be able to, to track the, the, the project, and when you hit that number or that measure, you will know that you have, you've actually reached. And A is for attainable. Is it realistic? I mean, it's good to dream big, but you gotta have realistic uh, goals uh, of which you have the resources of. So uh, keep it real and make sure that you are able to uh, achieve that goal. And uh, so SMA, R is for relevant. Is it related to your uh, career goals? It is related to your values, to your interests? Is it related to the kind of skills that you have? You know, does it align with everything that that is going on with your life or where you wanna, or with your aspirations in general? And then T is for time bound. So uh, set a deadline. So have a deadline. So uh, it would actually help, help you as an incentive. So you say that I have this time frame and I have to get this done by this time. So it helps you to go through the, the goal instead of just leave it open and not having a deadline because you're always going to be procrastinating. You're always going to push it to later. So it helps to have those criteria when you set a goal. It helps you to advance the project better. Yeah. yeah. This is actually a level of getting very deep into discussion of planning. Sometimes the people using a different language in the project management that is different than the typical language. So you probably say that, oh, my English is quite good. I understood smart, smart goals means, okay, clever goals. But you see that when you ask this question, what is a smart goal? Then at least Karima, who is the expert in this area needs two minutes to talk about that. And that is actually something, it has absolutely nothing to do with your level of English. And then this is actually something that is used sometimes during the interviews when the people are getting into the managerial positions. So probably you are getting into an interview and the people say, okay, what was the last time you took a smart goal in your thing? And then just say, okay, smart. Oh, it was so clever. I clever this. And then probably you're just saying that, oh, actually I don't have an idea about management. Yeah, something like a vision workflow. Yeah, exactly. Companies need, yeah, that type of. This is why uh, even when it comes to another language, even German, it's just about the technical terms. You know, you need just to, to cover those and you'll be just fine going through job interviews or going, you know, through the whole uh, process of career development. It's just covering the technical language that is related to the to your job target. So, yeah, that would be. Yeah, yeah so SMART actually stands for specific, measurable, achievable, re result oriented and time bound. So basically, that is the goal that you actually need to plan for. Yes, that's the abbreviation. Is, uh, and uh, there is a, I have an advice. Uh, so because I approach all of my goals as projects. So when you do that, it actually helps you to speed up the, pro the process and be so efficient and so effective. Because when you throw your goals out there and be like, I dream to, to have this, I dream to be this, I, uh, you know, my goal is to do this. But if you approach them as a project, which means you set them to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound, it makes the process a whole lot more clear. So you kind of have like a map of where you are right now and where is the destination and the whole journey that you have to go through. Keep in mind that there's gonna be a lot of setbacks and changes. And that's where the agile mindset comes in. So you kind of have to focus on the gains. So to keep the to keep progressing towards the goal, and not to get stuck in midway. So that's a golden concept when it comes to agile management and agile mindset. And there is another golden concept that tells us when a person like Karima has this kind of level of knowledge, then you should employ her at the company. You should not let her go. So this is another golden concept that you learned. In this program, we have one option that you say that if a person is really relevant to our core businesses and so on, knows a lot about our businesses and so on, then the first employer or the most important employer is the academics. So that is actually something that we're discussing at the moment. I'm very happy that uh, Karima um, is is uh, considering at the moment. I don't know, maybe you can just comment on that. I think you are considering to move to Austria to work at academics. So 
um, based on the information that you have, do you think that academics is a good place to work in? Yes, uh, I do admire the values and the mission of the Institute. That's what draw me. And that's really why I was interested in working academics or being part of academics. Uh, so, because the mission is about helping the graduates, helping the job seekers, integrating the European job market and just helping them succeed in their career and their life in general. And so I find that to align with my values and being an empathic person and I love helping people. So I knew that that wouldn't be much trouble to me because I would love to get into, into this uh, industry of consultancy and of, uh, of management in general. And uh, yeah, so I think it would be very exciting for me to, to join Kedemix. And I also admire your leadership. Um, that's one of the things that I noticed from the get-go. Uh, you're very kind. And for candidates who are uh, in uh, join, already uh, in Kedemix or who wants to, to join, they will notice that there is always that friendly atmosphere. It, it doesn't feel like we're talking to a consultant or a professor. It feels like we're talking to a friend. So, and that helps a lot. And also mistakes are not stigmatized. There's always that positive reinforcement and you believe in us. So also when you believe in yourself, like you can, that's, that's halfway. You're already halfway. You can get a lot of things achieved. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm very honored to be part of Academix. Yeah, thank you. And this is the same honor for us to have the good people and uh, both of you, Jyotsna and Karima, thank you. Thank you very much for giving a very valuable feedback here. I do have one question regarding the visa. Uh, yeah. Since this program is supplanted uh, online and offline learning, uh, I would, as an international uh, student, I would like to know uh, about the visa uh, process here. Uh, starting from India, for example, if I'm starting from India, if I'm doing my online course here in India and I have to travel to Europe for searching for jobs, what kind of support that academic, academics offers uh, for visa, so for visa invitation? Okay, the number of the paths that we have here to get a visa are, are practically a lot. There are like a 20 different paths to, to get different kinds of visa. And there are short-term visa, long-term visa, student visa, researcher visa, and you know, all of this stuff. We need to plan it individually for every single person according to their experience. It's not like this that we can just give a kind of, let's say, generic solution for everybody, but I can tell you what is the most suitable uh, paths that are available for you. Uh, one of the best options for you is to go for a university student. So with one of our partner universities or non-partner universities, if we can arrange an admission for you and you get the student visa on that one, this would be quite good so that you can get a security to have one year visa. And this is one of the possibilities that some of the people here in the team, they are already trying to get that. This is actually something that is very the most important. The other thing is that academics can also send you an invitation to get a short-term visa. There are two options available for visa type C or D. The regulations are a little bit different, depends on when you finished your last degree and what is the timetable. And it also depends on basically when you are going to start your uh, getting in this program. What academics can offer is considered in, in Germany and Austria as an Ausbildung or Weiterbildung and Fortbildung. So there is a special kind of visa also available for that kind of things because you say that you are basically joining this program for career advancement and there is a special kind of visa for that. Um, so there is also voluntary visa that is available, which is not that difficult. Basically it's available for everybody. Everybody can use that kind of voluntary visa. This job seeker visa is also another option, which is at the moment is not given to many people because the saturation of the job market and so on. So moving directly into Europe with the job seekers visa is at the moment difficult. At the moment, I say this is because of the Corona situation and all of this stuff that happened to the job market is not that difficult. But the best option for everybody is to get a job offer. Once you get a job offer, according to the job offer, there are two types of the visa that can be given to you. One kind of visa is, let's say, normal kind of, let's say, job uh, relevant visa. And the second one is the researcher's visa. It's Forschung is different than the other one. Researcher is actually quite good because in the researcher kind of visa, your language skill is not considered 
at all, nothing, absolutely nothing. If you go for a kind of, let's say, researcher visa, you can say, I have absolutely no idea about the German language. And they can still, you can still get this kind of, let's say, researcher visa. So it actually depends a lot on what you study, the amount of the uh, experience that you have and the paths that we have. We academics, we don't close any path. We're just analyzing them. I don't know, maybe Karima, you can compare uh, the last meeting that we had that we are discussing the variations of the visa and so on to give a kind of, let's say a little bit answer on that one. I think uh, if you are still asking me what kind of uh, visa is 100% good for me, I probably still say that I don't know, but I will keep, let's say at least three to four options on the table. So what do you think Karima, for example, can you talk about that? Based on the last session we, ha we had when it comes to what's the best uh, visa that I can go for. So we had this table where we analyzed all of the options that we have, uh, the, the pros and cons of each one, uh, how much would it cost? And so we analyze, we calculate all of that and we go for the best option, but we keep all of those paths open in case there are any changes because you know the, the government, they always come up with new restrictions or conditions that changes, especially depending on this uh, corona situation. So we keep all of those paths open, but at the end of the day, you always, always go for the best option that, that is suitable for you. Like you would never have to go for an option that is, uh, that is expensive for you or not quite uh, suitable for you. You always go for the right one for you, yeah. So practically what we are doing is that, as Karima mentioned, we have, a, oh, we have a table usually, and this is like a SWOT analysis, strength, weakness. <laughs> and so basically we just compare the positive aspect and negative aspect of each of the visas that might be available to you. It can be the visa from Austria, visa from Germany, that kind of the visa in Austria, the other kind of the visa in there, and then there is another one from Portugal and the other one, you know, that there are lots of options available. We focus on the best option, and then we are talking about the cost, about the financial stability, and we could talk about the, the ease of getting those, those things, but we are not canceling any path. So it's not like this that I will tell everybody, hey, you should go for a student visa or you should go for the work visa and all of this stuff. This is still open. This is actually something uh, until the last minute is open. But when it comes to applying, we need to get in touch with the officials. You know that sometimes we need to have a phone call and so on. I don't know whether you have experience. So Karima, did we have any experience that immediately in the middle of a discussion, I had to call somebody or I think there was a few things happening. Maybe you can tell this. Yes, there's been many experiences where uh, you uh, you had to to directly contact uh, the person who is responsible for a certain program or when it comes to the visa regulations, and so you we get that assistance directly. So when it comes to the understanding the visa and everything that you have to do for it, you know you don't really have to go through that hassle of figuring it out, figuring it out by contacting the embassy or, or everything. You get all of that information directly from Dr. Javad because he's always in contact directly with the officials. So you get the updated and the valid information. And so that helps a lot. And to, to know what kind of actions that can be taken immediately because you get that information fresh, updated, and, the, the, and that is valid in the, in, the, in the meantime. So yeah, there's a lot of actions that we actually take live during the session. To, to speed up the process, yeah. Yeah, and maybe I can also add to that, there is, uh, there is an advantage of being, uh, let's say, uh, I'm the head of the Institute, so I'm using that. So that's actually the point. When I'm contacting somebody on the phone, just say, hey, this is my name, I'm the head of the Academics Institute, and they are responsible to answer me. That's actually one of the things that uh, that happened. So for example, there was one case that the person didn't have the language exam, IELTS. So with a couple of phone calls and one certificate that we prepared in a few minutes, that was actually something bypassed. So the, 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 the other person on the other side, of the, if you don't have an IELTS, then you cannot apply. <laughs> and then with a couple of phone calls, we just solved it in five minutes. So this is actually something that can happen. And this is the reality of Europe. There are rules, but if you are an official, with the help and support of other officials, you can bypass the rules. That's actually, that's Europe. <laughs> um, or find the equivalent options to, to help, yeah.
exactly yeah okay equivalent option is actually something yeah for example there was another case that the person required a gmat exam a gmat was required for a specific uh, course program if you want to apply and if you don't have it they usually say that oh your your admission is canceled you're not going to get it we had that case that the gmat was required the person didn't have the gmat so immediately with a few phone calls and so on uh, and by the way, this is also something that we have at Academic. So we can, we are a certifying body. So we can certify the people across specific um, criteria and we can give the certifications. And this is an equivalent certification. It's not GMAT, but that's actually another certificate that we have at Academics. That's an equivalent management skills proficiency certificate that we have. So this is an equivalent. And many of the organization and universities, they accept it. So from that point, this is an advantage for many people. So they will join us. And even if they don't have experience or relevant certificate, we will create the certificate during the process of application if required. <laughs> yeah, because it is considered as an equivalent credential. It goes with the credentials and that certifies that you do have this knowledge that is required. So it helps. Yeah. Let me ask Giotsna about this certificate and the recommendation letter that you received from this. How was the reaction to the certificate or recommendation letter that you received from the academics? Do they really focus on that, asking some questions about that when, once they see this kind of certification recommendation letter comes here? Because without that, a usual person has only a CV and a cover letter motivation something. But with the support of academics, you have an additional support that's really pushes you through the interview, but then they will start asking you questions, what it is, okay? What is your experience? Yeah, coming to the certifications and I mean, recommendations letters, it's like uh, different designations here. It's, uh, you are like doctor, right? So uh, getting a certificate from the doctor is one of the very added value from the Institute. And yeah, I, I even you gave me one certification. I did. So one of the good thing, I thought like I have to take too many certifications, but luckily it worked with one certificate and one recommendation letter. That's it. So which is one of the good thing. And yeah, it is like uh, the recruiters or the, I mean, who are trying to recruit you, they will know that, okay, you are from the Institute and the Institute head is supporting you from the back end. This is one of the good thing that it's not like, okay, somebody writing a normal certificate because everybody will write the certificate. But the thing is that your your resume and your certificate both will matches. Like the recommendation letters and all, everything is like a matching. Nothing is like a not a interlinking. Okay, yeah, he has given a normal certificate and it is like a uh, waste or something else. So it, everything is like a matching and interlinked. It, it is one of the good things. Yeah. And I told like during my interviews also I used to tell like, uh, yeah, so I was getting some... Uh, training under so and so professor, he's a doctorate. So I, I can say to the other uh, recruiters, this is one of the added value. So nobody can say, so what are you doing? So, so if you go to some simple consultant or something else, yeah, I was just doing so and so, then nobody will believe and what you are doing. This is one of the strongest points that everybody will, yeah, you will get, your resume will get attracted. That is one of the good things. So there is a lot of difference between the master student guys and masters with yeah academics autopilot program guys so you are something special than the others so everybody has this uh, masters degree with good grades and all but you are a little bit upper level than them for the example if there are 10 to 20 applications with masters degree and you have and you also a part of this member of this academics program so your uh, chances will be more compared to the other persons that is one of the very good thing can I continue the question with you, Jyotsna? Can you comment on that one? What is the effect of academics affiliation? On, yeah. um, you know, basically, affiliation is something that you can immediately get once you join academics. But uh, do you see that this is an effect, that this is just like a yeah, day yeah. one effect or something like that? Yes, yes. Like uh, normally, if you try to, if we as a students, normally if we try to join in any internships or any work student jobs, it's like a, a, I mean, the designation and the role will be like you are a student assistant or something like that. So, which is like some of the institute will not, will not count your, uh, it is as an experience. 
for example if you take uh, some big companies also they don't accept that as an experience count even if you do some fleeced practicum something like mandatory internship for 6 months if you try to do uh, they, it doesn't count as an experience i mean i'm not saying in every cases but in some cases it, it, it doesn't exist so if this the first point i joined in this program is that i have this designation name like associate or researcher that is linked with academics institute so like even though if you are a fresh graduate with having good skills and good grades and all if you doesn't have an experience uh, experience environment and working in some institute or companies so finding a job is like a little bit more difficult but it's it's a very good thing so the first point i like about this academics institute is that that name because even my friends like want to guys like the institute because of the name they are trying to give because it's very important for the job seekers because for the job seekers they do not have much time like they just have like one and a half year that one and a half year is like very uh, little time so it's, it's like very fast so the time is changing very rapid that is one of the thing so that is the reason like yeah many university i mean universities or companies will be asking you what is your role in that i mean they may have, they have asked me already like many times so i don't need to say like they already asked me to your role in the institute so i used to say like getting more efficient work not on the field of technical but also in the not technical background because companies need a person who is multi talented not like only in the sticking to one particular field so that is one of the good thing so this name is very important so frank this is i mean i thanks to professor like how he get this idea on giving to the students who are graduated or coming graduating students and all yeah that's a very big plus frankly speaking it's a very big plus to the uh, job seekers actually can i continue the question again because yeah. my background it's it's your profile here in my background and i'm very proud to show your profile but can you tell me what is the effect of your linkedin profile and can you tell me what was that before joining academics and after so i just want to kind of let's say before after what happens yeah. to your linkedin profile yeah i can make a small difference like uh, in the month of uh, last year december i joined the program so before the december like from june july to november uh, i applied many companies like around 60 companies per day to i used to keep in my mind like okay i can apply two companies in a day in a total of 60 in a month so i thought of applying like that i applied but like i got one interview call that's it but other than that one two interview calls i didn't got much but after that i reduced my stress levels and just focused on this uh, resume build up and the linkedin profile like what i am doing so the name itself like associate consultant in r&d means i mean an expert like somebody has to recognize me as an expert because as a master guy like nobody knows if uh, i mean if somebody has to give an opportunity even if he is an uh, he has he's a very good profile somebody has to like okay give you an opportunity so that or else nobody will going to look into your profile and what you are doing so after writing this profile in the linkedin and my resume it has boosted up and i didn't apply to many companies so i applied to very very less companies and i got a calls i really know that it uh, i got the calls because of this name can you repeat the numbers again i think this was the numbers that you mentioned how many applications you had per month uh, i got six six five to six interview calls in five to six interview calls three to four people recruiters have asked me about this this in the role and your what you are doing in this academics institute Mm-hmm. this is yeah they like they asked okay you are doing a research it's a limited contract or unlimited contract when you are going to join so it's like that mm-hmm. so this is one of the plus points so you are not any more a student or something else so you are a professional so this professional means so they will get attract so many of the companies need uh, this um, experience candidates so that is one of the good thing they are going to give it, give, give from this program that is good thing. yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, moving to karima uh, i'm also very proud that you have a very professional profile on uh, on linkedin can you also answer the same question what is your before after in linkedin yeah now i'm actually more recognized as 
Uh, Joyceness said, Joyceness said uh, as a professional, meaning that people uh, or hiring managers recognize me as a person who has valuable and relevant knowledge in this field that I'm applying for and that I have experience, which means that, uh, okay, this candidate has the qualification and, and they have more belief that you will get the job done. So you have more chances that you will uh, go through the, the interview selection. And so, yeah, it helps that uh, we get to have that professional affiliation to, to prove that we have that knowledge that is essential yeah. for the job. Exactly. This is the last um, two questions. If there is any, otherwise we will close the meeting. Any last two questions? Yes, Prof. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, fair enough. Thank you. Sorry, I joined late. It's, it's been rainy here, so the network has been something else. So, for network, <laughs> yeah. I have, uh, it's been quite interesting and inspiring. And this is something that we want to do here in Nigeria. I said initially, I've uh, we truly uh, uh, imbibe because we are tired of uh, administrative work. We want people to develop skill. And truly, we saw academics doing everything possible to ensure that we, at least you wouldn't jump on the route and they ask you, what did you learn in school? You know, I said, but this time around, the certificate has a quality in it where one, wherever you go to. Uh, here, like I told you, we will be arranging a program in two weeks campaign where we a lot of people to tell us what they have learned over time in school. And we now try to show these. You went to school, you just learn about the quality of the uh, papers, but you don't have anything upstairs. So academics is ready to do all so that your career progression will be seen and eventually at the end of the day, you could be employable because that's the most important thing. Why spend so much money in school? After all, when you are done, you won't be able to go to anywhere to be for someone or working for yourself. So this is what we want to try and let them know uh, because in that thing you always see, but I'm sure that after a while, we will be able to inject this spirit of so that everyone that is coming out from school will know where he is going to. Because the majority will want to come out from school, but you don't know where you're going to. Because here you have a quality of a certificate with it at the end. So I truly appreciate what I have learned about the karma and so on, and all this stuff. Thank you for I, I, I'm in Govin, and by the, at, at the right time, I will prove concerning that. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you to uh, Ferdinand for doing this stuff. And I should also mention that uh, Ferdinand is one of the good contacts that we have. I think we already prepared some of the, the actions together. So this is one of the things that you see in my background. I don't know whether this was something that you wanted to start a specific campaign for Nigeria that uh, we have and the other things that we have. But anyway, we are discussing what kind of uh, uh, what kind of actions are required and anyway we're going to continue discussion anyway for especially for Africa and um, other regions there might be requirement to have a specific uh, campaigns required and this is actually we are also supporting the uh, the partners that we have because this is actually a mutual collaboration that we have in order to be able to uh, to talk the, to, the, to the real customers of our program, the individual. So this is actually something that we need to do it together in a collaboration and only working together, we can offer the best services to the people. Thank you once again also to you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. If there is no further questions, uh, I'm just going to uh, thank you, all of you, uh, once again for joining this, this event and also thank you for those people who joined here on the Sky Room. All of you, you can contact me immediately after the meeting. Uh, I will be available to answer your questions. The best way would be to send me a message or a voice message on, on WhatsApp if you want to ask something, discuss something. 
Otherwise, you can also contact uh, and apply if you're interested in the program or if you're interested in uh, discussing something or interested in making an appointment or something, that would be also an opportunity. We can talk about that. The starting point would be um, by sending a simple message on WhatsApp. I think this would be something that we are at the moment answering the fastest way. And um, thank you. Thank you all once again for this thank you. interesting. We will try to uh, put some part of this event. Uh, maybe we can cut some part of that and we will use it online. So if you missed some part in the beginning or later on in the middle, if your internet connection was not so good, Anyway, we are going to have a remix of this event and probably we are going to announce it online or we announce it on the social media. At the moment, uh, the social media, Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. LinkedIn is our major platform at the moment. And beside that, we have, of course, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Pinterest and a few other uh, social media will be available. Well, thank you, Karima. Thank you, uh, George Sinan. Thank you, Dr. Javad, for the good session. Uh, most of the questions were answered uh, and I wish all the best for Karima and uh, Jyotsina and hopefully we will be connecting further in the future. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Sure. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you from here. Thank you everybody. So we are just going to close the meeting now. Bye, okay. Bye everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Have a good day everyone. You're good too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye everyone.